Hello everyone, it's Punky Roo here again, and uh, we, I've got another project that I've been doing in Game Maker Studio that I wanted to share with you all. I've really been experimenting with a lot of different things, basically just the proof of concepts to see how I can use this in the future. Now, I recently published my first uh, mobile game to the Android Play Store, Google Play Store, We're still working on the iOS, that's a whole other process. But uh, it's called Farty Party Unicorns, and I'm really excited because it's the first game I've published. I made it in Game Maker Studio, and it was really easy to do. Now, one of the things I want to add to it is sort of planetary gravity, or having these these gravity wells that that the world can interact with, that things can be affected by. And I want to talk about what I've done in my little example today. You can sort of see things moving around. The square is, I guess, a spaceship. Uh, the white, sort of semi-opaque, semi-transparent circles are kind of like, effectively, the gravity well. So there's like an event horizon, and as soon as the object, the spaceship, gets into proximity and can actually collides with that object, it gets drawn in towards the center. And in this case, I've just put kind of a static object that represents a planet in a couple of the gravity wells, and then in one of the gravity wells, nothing. And you can see I have these other little meatballs flying towards the thing. Now, this is a little twacked out. It's not, like, perfect, um, but it actually produces really close to the effect I was going for without a lot of effort. So I want to talk a little bit about the code that went into creating it, and, um, yeah, yeah, we'll just discuss. So let's take a look at the code. All right, so, so yes, yeah, so here's a meatball, but let's go to the room. Okay, so in the room here, we have set up a, a an interesting array of objects. Now, of course, that's the spaceship, the little uh, rectangular or square, um, and we have some some planets that mostly right now just represent represent something solid for the the rotating objects, the objects that are collapsing in towards the center of the gravity well can kind of bump into something solid. So. You know, I had to do a lot of interesting things here. So for start out, gravity is is activated for this room. Excuse me, uh, physics is, is enabled. But gravity on both the X and Y axis are zero. Because while we want gravity interactions and be able to use the built-in physics engine, we don't want it to be in any particular direction because we're going to define the directions. And we do that with these gravity objects. So basically, I write some code uh, really simply that basically says, hey, if you collide with some kind of object that I use a parent object solid, which includes the asteroids or the, the player, which is the, the, the spaceship, the, the, the square, you know, if you collide, now apply a force. So it basically just calculates the direction of where it should apply the force. Because it's kind of, it needs to be on the opposite side of the the object to push it in. So it's not really a drawing in force, we're doing a force on the other side to push it towards the center. But that creates a really nice effect because it it uses the uh, the actual x and y uh, values of comparing the, the object, the center of the gravity well, or the gravity well itself. Um, everything's the, the, the focal point or the, the reference point for everything uh, is in the center, middle center of the um, all of the objects. So it calculates that. So we know that as the object is going towards the center of the gravity well, if it goes too far, it's kind of pulled back. So that's how it controls everything. And again, we just apply a physics force. And for the object itself, let's go over to check out the physics. We are not using physics specifically for the gravity well because they're acting as, as just something to interact with. They don't have any actual physics themselves because that would be a problem. Because if they had physics, if I hit this use physics, then we would end up having collisions with the solid objects that want to go into it and they'd never go into the gravity well. They would just bump off the, the edge of it, the side of it. So we, we definitely don't want that. So it's not a physical object. The planet, on the other hand, does use physics and acts as a physical object. Um, we don't have to worry about so I did density of zero because I didn't want it to be affected by gravity of or the force of something bumping into it. Because if you if I had set some other value here, 
it would act like any lightweight physical object. So when a, the player or an asteroid hit the planet, it would be bounced back a little bit, you know, because some of that energy would be transferred. Some of that force would be transferred, you know, equal and opposite reaction. So we don't want that. And setting density to zero for an object that uses physics will have that effect. So it basically will act like it's, it will use physics and it'll interact and it'll have those, those physical collisions, but it will not take on any of that energy. It's like an immovable object. You can also do this with the, if you have a defined gravity on one of the axis, for example, just the y-axis, you could use density zero to make sure that the object does not fall. So you can have a solid object, like a platform, that the player will interact with and it'll stop that player from falling, but you don't have to worry about that object falling itself, which is a nice touch. So that's effectively all that's going on. It was really easy to throw together with just those basic objects and how they interact. Now the player is, is itself a physical object. This does have a density because it needs to move around and bounce around and everything when it interacts with things. Uh, parent solid, you really should take advantage of parents in all of your games because they're so handy, especially if you have a deep hierar hierarchical uh, organization and you want to kind of work with inheritance and objects. But we'll talk about that in another video. But again, uses physics, has a density. And that's all there is to it. And, you know, at the end of the day, you get something that looks really swank. And yeah, I need to tweak the values a little bit, but that's totally fine. That is absolutely fine. So move in. And I didn't really get into it, but I'm just using, to move the player, I'm applying a force whenever I hit the left and right keys, etc., etc. And there we are. So with this, I can do a lot of interesting things. This would be great for if I want to do kind of like a realistic 2D space game, um, space exploration game. I was also considering this as a kind of, using this for a planetary explorer type of game kind of like a sandbox where i generate like a a galaxy you know it would be it wouldn't be super realistic but it would be on a larger scale that you could go down onto a planet and the planet would turn as you're walking around it so you could actually explore the planet in two dimensions you know but it would uh it always keeps the player and that's actually why i didn't end up in, in, including this in this particular example but the reason why i put the the colors on the bottom of that is because eventually I want to calculate this always landing bottom side down whenever it gets into towards a planet. And that's effectively how I'd uh, make it kind of walk around a planet, you know? I just kind of go do 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 do. And right now it's tumbling like crazy because <laughs> the forces aren't really in place uh, to make it really happen the way I want it to. Um, but that's for another, another time, another project. So, in any case, I hope this is really inspiring. Um, you can do so much with Game Maker Studio. I'm so happy that I settled on it. Um, again, I've committed to it. I'm releasing my first games in Game Maker Studio. I'm working on another, a couple other games that are going to be mobile. Some are going to be uh, for st on Steam for just PC use, PC play. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please be sure to give me a follow. I'm really trying to build up this channel. Uh, but I also have a Twitch channel as well where I stream games and also some do, do like live development and live art uh, streaming. So if you're into that, definitely go check out uh, my Twitch account. So it's basically twitch.tv slash punkyroo. I'm punkyroo here, I'm punkyroo there. So subscribe here, follow me on Twitch. Thank you so much for watching and as always, thank you for joining me on this journey.